guys and gals, and every here for Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you mouse, what are the game you dragged today? I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Rain Check. See, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. Let's make this quick. The duo swiftly walks towards the entrance, and I follow, despite my injury slowing me down. Is there any reason you can't explain it to me in the car? I'd rather not have you do any form of damage to the electronics around, i.e. my rental car. The hotel... The hotel lobby should be a suitable place, especially with the kiosks I saw around. It's been a while since you used this, Rue. Would you like to explain the functionality to Theodore? The wolf scratches his beard and stares at Javier. No. But if I must... A segmenter is exactly what it sounds like, it... I was wondering who those voices sounded so... why those voices sounded so familiar. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Oh, hello. Who's this guy? Do they know him? Lawrence, what are you doing here? Looking for you two, of course. Tried calling you, but it went to voicemail. Was just about to contact Javier. Luckily, I saw you two coming in. I thought you took time off. I did, but our boss requested my assistance moments before I got on my plane. Regrettably, I am here now. He chuckles as, he, as no one says anything back. I'm joking, of course. Huh, you didn't come here just to say hi, did you? Nah, I didn't. I came to deliver Javier the information he requested from the office. Oh, I said I was going to pick it up later this week. Thanks. The Grey Wolf takes out a piece of paper and a tiny USB from his coat pocket. There's also this. He waves the paper in his paw before giving it to Rue. Hmm? How interesting. I don't think I've seen this before. The boss wanted me to deliver that to you. What is this, an insignia? What about this address written underneath? Strange, I don't recognize this particular design. I glance over and see a gold circle-looking symbol on the paper. Address is at a local pub, about ten blocks away from here. As for the symbol, I have no idea. I was hoping you two wouldn't- I was hoping you two would know, but I guess not. Regardless, I was asked to accompany the two of you and help figure out what this circle meant. What's the importance of this symbol? You're asking me. Besides, Boss told me to look into this and didn't mention anything else about it. You can speak more about specifics tomorrow night. Wait, I just realized you're coming along. This must be serious, then. That won't be necessary. We're equipped to manage this on our own. An excess of personnel, particularly during a stakeout, could be counterproductive. As a brushing off Rue, Lawrence gives a chuckle and focuses on polishing his sunglasses with a cloth from his, from his coat. Of course, I wholeheartedly agree, but I'm just following orders. Besides, I didn't skip, any, I didn't skip my flight to the tropics just to have you turn me down. Fine. When have I ever gotten in the way? Rue scoffs back at the Grey Wolf's question. Eh, this can't be good. You're kidding, right? What about that time you destroyed the evidence Javi and I are collected by the refinery? You're still hung up on that? It was either the evidence or our lives, you dolt. You know we weren't in any danger. That's because I was the one who, dis who, who disabled the flame after I removed the... There were no flames, and I destroyed the main gas tank and take long before you got... Never mind, it doesn't matter. Just meet me at the specified location tomorrow night at 8 sharp. We will. The fox smiles back at the Grey Wolf before flashing a look of annoyance at Rue. Perfect. The tall, slender wolf finally turns to me, giving me a look of both curiosity and interest. You must be Theodore, correct? Apologies for letting you just stand there. Uh, it's fine. I'm used to it. He extends his paw, which I hesitantly shake. His grip is quick but firm. A pleasure meeting you. I hope Javier and Rue have been treating you well and you haven't been too inconvenienced. I know they have a habit of making things more... extravagant. His tone is lighthearted, but his expression says otherwise. Yeah, they've been great. And that injury of yours. It looks fresh. What happened there? Hopefully not because of these two. I panic as he points to the slight purple patch on my thigh. How did he notice that? Shit, maybe I should lie about it so I don't make them make them look bad. No, I accidentally tripped. Over in my room. In the bathtub. Lawrence stares at me with concern. Maybe he bought it? I see. Well then. Do be more careful. I know the bathtubs have I know the bathtubs have the have the tendency to fight back when they're wet. <laughs> hmm, can't have anything happen to Theodore, right guys? I don't think he bought it. Before I forget, this is for you. Huh? He passes me a small business card, similar to the one Rue had given me. My brows furrow as I glare back at Lawrence, feeling a bit hesitant as I quickly tuck it into my pocket. Thanks. 
In case anything happens, you can also contact me. Anything else? No, that'll be all. I'll see you two tomorrow evening. The Grey Wolf casually turns on his heel and strolls out the lobby. Rue lets out a deep, audible sigh while Javier tries to stifle a laugh. Careful of the bathtub. <laughs> I had to come up with some I had to come up with something. I didn't want you guys to look bad. I'll admit I'm I'll admit I'm impressed. I didn't think you had the guts to lie. Yeah, well I don't think he really bought it. I shoot a glance at Rue with him staying so quiet, something's clearly up. Everything okay? It's nothing. It's not nothing. Rue doesn't work well with Lawrence. They always clash with each other on ideas. It's not that. I can't shake the feeling that he's always scheming. Something dubious. And this time's no different. Are you sure? Obviously, if Andrew wants him to tag along with us, something must be up. He's been solving every skeleton case recently, so if he's here then, then this may be more complicated than we thought. Wait, if he's joining you guys tomorrow, is Cypress in these events related to skeleton? Maybe even Blackout? It's too early to tell, but we'll get more information tomorrow. Hmm. If this is related to Blackout, then it might be somehow related to me. I know I should stay out of things, but now I'm curious. Maybe I'll see how things pan out tonight. What did he give you? His business card? Rue gestures toward my pocket, prompting me to dig out the card. Oh, yeah, although I don't really see the purpose. A subtle growl emerges from Rue. His eyes lock onto Lawrence's business card before he abruptly stops and diverts his gaze. Go back to your room and get some rest. We'll notify you when we're on our way to pick you up. I'll see you later. Wait, what about... And with that, Rue walks out of the lobby. The fox simply shrugs and grins back at me. I didn't want to say it in front of his face, but he's furious. <laughs> of what, Lawrence? Probably. I do find it strange that he's here. He was supposed to be off on vacation. I clearly remember him making a fuss over who could have time off this week months ago. Rue is probably furious that he has to spend time with him now. Is that really it? But didn't he say Lawrence was suspicious? Him being here instead of vacation does sound pretty suspicious. Well, he's just doing what he's been assigned. Our boss has a tendency to do that. Is it okay to ask who the two of you do, why the two of you don't get along? Uh, two of you don't get along together. Lawrence has some unorthodox ways of getting things done, according to Rue. That being said, Rue does too, like you've seen. Maybe that's why he's pissed too. Unorthodox? Like how? You'll need to ask Rue for finer details, but he told me he doesn't respect the rules when it comes to investigations. I've never directly worked with him before, I, before, so I wouldn't know. I take out the segmenter in my other pocket and Javier nods. All right. Ah, right, the segmenter. We can go over that later. I should probably check up on Rue. I'm sure you don't even need me to explain it to you. You're smart enough, right? Uh, great. I'll see you later. Before I can respond, Javier runs out of the lobby, leaving me dumbfounded. I study Lawrence's card in one paw and the segmenter in the other. He's giving me way more credit than I deserve. I don't even know how the hell to turn this thing on. What the hell do I do now? I rise from bed and stretch my tired limbs, letting out a soft groan as I mute my alarm. Jeez. My gaze is drawn to the softly blinking segmenter on my bedside table. Oh. Right, maybe it's time to figure out what this thing does. I pick it up, power it on, and find myself staring at the tiny LED screen, feeling a bit lost. There's just a handful of buttons. It can't be that complicated, can it? I press each button methodically, but the screen remains unchanged. I try aiming the segmenter around, but surpri unsurprisingly, nothing happens. Feeling frustrated, I opt for a quick refresh in the bathroom instead. God, it looked like a mess. I fixate on the bruise on my thigh, wincing as I gently prod it. Well, at least it's not getting any worse, I guess. Huh? I wonder who that could be. A Rue said he'd let me know when they're coming back to pick me up. Uh -oh. Take it murdered, dude. I cautiously approach the door, curiosity rising. Looking through the spyglass, I find it darker than expected. Do the hallway lights go out? I'm barely able to make out a nervous-looking hyena on the other side. Who is this guy? Hi, can I help you? I speak up, making sure they can hear me through the door. Hey, is your power out too? I'm staying in the room next to you. My power? I hit the light switch by the door. Nope, seems fine. Okay, I'll go talk to the front desk about it. Thanks. 
Mahina disappears from view before I slowly open the door and notice the lights in the hallway flickering. Wait. I look down at the segmenter, still in my paws. Did I do that? Holy shit, this thing is crazy range! Well, now that I know what it's capable of, I shouldn't mess around with it anymore. I see why Javier is so cautious earlier. <gasps> I walk over to my bedside table and bet to my bedside and pick up the phone. Hello? We'll be there in 30 minutes. Please change into something more inconspicuous. Hey, Javier, uh, sure. What should I... The call abruptly ends before I can finish my question. Well, so much for that. It's been over 40 minutes now. This drive feels way longer than I remember. We haven't really talked much either, since Rue's focused on driving and Javier's typing away on his laptop. Eventually, I can spot the familiar lights blinking from the cooling towers off in the distance. Must be getting close. Well, we're almost there. How you feeling, Theodore? Honestly, still kind of nervous, but at least I'm not scared anymore. Good, you have nothing to be afraid of. I want to know why I got those texts, and why, why the power plant? What does it all mean? Well, there's Monty, too. Exactly. I wonder what the connection is, or if there even is any. The car suddenly jolts, causing Javier's laptop to fall on the floor. <sighs> Could you try to avoid the potholes? I'm working here. How about I drive over three more, just for you? Hmm. <laughs> Fox focuses back on his laptop, sounding defeated. Are you almost done? No, I'm not. I'm trying to wrap up the decryption process on the data Lawrence gave me, among some other things. But it's taking longer than expected. Hmm. If it's not the PG... PGP2, then... Don't tell me it's... Fox continues to murmur to himself about the contents of his screen, of a screen that I don't fully understand. Some time passes, and the familiar sights of the streets and buildings around me start to become recognizable. In any case, we're as close as can be. Fox closes the laptop shut and stores it away in the glove compartment. All right, all right. I wasn't getting anywhere anyway, thanks to somebody. All right, y'all, I'm actually going to pause it right there. I've got to get going. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.